Good morning. Hi, Tracy. Hello. It appears we're back for books at lunchtime again. It, it certainly does. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I've got a question for you. Have you? Yeah, I do. Yes. Um, we've had another question, um, like a virtual browsing question, really, which is really nice because it's hard to know what to buy because I think often we're triggered aren't we when we go into a bookshop we're inspired by what we see around us if you don't have the opportunity to actually see the spines of books it's hard to know where to start so it's nice that we're able to try and alleviate that problem so the question is typically I buy my in-laws some kind of local history book for Christmas so can you tell me what's new please right okay excellent um, this sounds like me. My, I always <laughs> buy my in-laws either that or books. It was about. from you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old tractors, old buses, local history. Yes. So um, it's, this is a subject that I've already been looking at because it, it is my shopping list as well. Um, and in our catalogue, which we produced, and it, it is available online, we actually featured a couple of local history books, which I happen to have here. Oh yes, that's the catalogue. Yeah. Um, so. This one is, this is the, the most gifty one, but we, we've got a whole range of price points available here. This is A History of Norfolk by Chris Berenger. It's a, a great big book. It is paperback, but because it's been um, produced with color photographs throughout, it's actually, it was a bit expensive to produce, but there's a lot of really solid writing in there as well. Some of our customers worked with or were, um, students under Chris Berenger's instruction and they say that he's an absolute expert on oh, Norfolk wow. and so this is 25 pounds but it's um one that's going to have a long shelf life in your home because you'll wherever you travel in Norfolk you're going to be able to get a lot more insight about where we live um our beautiful county um it does go through history the bronze and iron ages rim in Norfolk um Norfolk under the Anglo-Saxons and Vikings, etc. Um, it goes into architecture, the physical landscape being the fens, the broads, um, um, how we earned our money being wood sheet and textiles, um, and the church. So it covers oh, very wow. comprehensively the lot. So that's a very solid choice if you're looking for something quite gifty. Um, if you want something, another book that's um, a smaller history we also have but I don't have in stock because I've sold it um, the um, John Davis's um, history of Norfolk which you can look up in the catalogue um, where we may be able to talk to him at some point um, so can you yes that's it the little oh I do have that one I was thinking of his other book oh here it oh. is <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of his other book, um, Little History of Norfolk, John Davis. So um, he is also an expert, absolute expert in his own right, because he was the um, chief curator of the Norfolk Museum Service. Oh, wow. Yeah, so basically he knows what there is to know about Norfolk. Um, and um, so this goes back to fossils, so even further than the other book. Um, and then it covers the, the growth of the textile industry, agricultural advances, etc. This one is a hardback. The other was a paperback. It's beautifully produced. Very pretty. Um, it is very pretty. Um, and it doesn't have the color photographs. So the information is just as solid, but more concise without the photographs and is only 12 pounds. So less than half the price of the other one, but just as solid in terms of what you get um, and possibly more so. Um, that that didn't come out right um it's going to be very solid because he was the um chief curator of the norfolk museum service um so that's that one um we also have the little book of norwich which is more about um this is more of a miscellany so this is norwich mm -hmm. anecdotes um things that have happened local your um murders with po poisoned dumplings how norfolk is that um rioters um quirky anecdotes and details um so it's got old adverts it's mostly text-based but yeah it's oh, just going to be a, fun too, isn't it? a book to dip into i do love christmas for this actually we always find these lovely kind of 
gifty type books at Christmas time. Yes, absolutely. To, to pique your interest. Uh, zoning more into Wyndham, um, mm. we have we have when war came to Wyndham. So this was about the fact that we had um, a lot of American servicemen stationed here and the impact that um, having them in town had um, also the evacuees who were here and just how life changed. Um, I think it is this young man who's one of our customers. Really? That's great. Yes. And this photograph is of the bridge at the end of Chapel Lane, just as you turn left to go back toward um, Wicklewood. Um, oh. So that, that Humpy Bridge, it's that one just before the allotments. Um, and so he and his wife come in frequently. And it was written by Adrian and Ann Hoare who are here and they are also customers. So you're not going to get much more local than this. Um, and again, it has lots of photographs. Well, that's an old document, um, photographs. Oh, wow. So it's again, a book that you can dip in and out of. Um, it's got lists of when bombs fell and where. Um, more photographs, properties requisitioned for use by evacuee families, um, photographs of how the high school was affected. So, um, and that is, has not got a price on it. Um, I'll ask my able assistant in a moment to come back to us with a price on this one, please. Um, <laughs> so that's that one. Um, we also have um, another one that hasn't been priced. Um, which is Edwin Gooch, champion of the farm workers. And I don't know how we didn't know about Edwin Gooch. Um, he was actually the leader of the um, Labour Party in South Norfolk, and he went to Parliament and fought for um, farm workers' rights and um, oh, wow. was a real Labour leader and very much of influence. Um, this book has been quite popular and, again, has a lot of photographs in it from the time, but it's really his story and how he um, affected and improved the nation, but he was a Wyndham boy. And there is- Is it a... written by a relative? I noticed the yeah. author shares the name. Yes, I think it's his son, I think. Um, his grandson, Simon Gooch. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's, um, I think I that in the catalogue, it says it's nine ninety five. That was my, what memory was telling me. So that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and when war went came to Wyndham is ten ninety five. Thank you, able assistant. <laughs> that's Barney in the background. Um, <laughs> so we also have um, this is from a range of books. Now they are they're not cheap actually. Um, but for someone who's an enthusiast of transport, particularly historic railways, this is a great little series. So this slender hardback is £18.95. This is Dis to Norwich, and it's about the railway lines that, um, as they were. And it includes the Wyndham line. Um, we have a big range of these. Um, and they just show photographs of how the railways used to be. And what else have they got? Um, pictures of trains, pictures of tickets, pictures of the stations on the line, um, places that don't have stations anymore. Um, here is a flooded out bridge from 1912 in um, just north of Fornset. So, you know, just the history of the railway line, which is going to make some people really happy. It's. <laughs> A train person really but I have a bit of a thing for disused railway stations like there's I totally understand the the kind of nostalgia and appeal for it and I imagine yeah. that would make a lot of people very happy at Christmas I, th I think it would mm. this was near Ashwellthorpe which is very very local oh wow um you do know that the lizard the walk that we do where it goes up that was actually the railway line a long while back Wow. Yeah, that's why that's kind of sloped up and straight, because that's where the train went. 
Anyway, we could go off on a little tangent there. We could actually, yes, a very beautiful tangent. Um, in addition, I have two more to show you. Um, so this came out a couple of years ago. This is Wyndham and District Through Time, and it kind of does what it says on the cover. Old photograph, new photograph, so how it's changed. Um, and, you know, it, it has changed a lot, but all of the photographs are recognizable um, with additional quirky information. I know who that's going to be because of this. Have you seen this before? No. This is the um, death mask or the bust that they made of the um, James Bloomfield Rush. This is in the castle. Um, it's, it has always been in the basement, but they, they will have changed it because of the work they're doing. And he did the, um, probably did the Stanfield Hall, Stanfield Hall murder. So if you go out the Ashworth Thorpe Road and keep going, it's off to the left. And um, apparently he brutally murdered everybody. And the um, trial was so celebrated um, and, and the hanging in Norwich that I, and I'm probably getting some of my history wrong, but I remember reading that Dickens actually came to the hanging and they had sort of um, memorabilia like um, jugs and teapots and things about him and the murder um, that people could buy souvenirs about his hanging. Um, <laughs> Dickens always used to be hanging out of those things. I was talking to a colleague the other day and she was saying about Dickens turning up a, to watch a murder, not a murder, a hanging or something. Research. I'm sure it was just research. Um, I mean, speaking, yeah. speaking of hangings, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you one thing I learned a couple of years ago. Hmm. Um, from the, the most um, unlikely of places, we also carry, um, we put orders in for old ordnance survey maps. So this one is Norwich North from 1905. We also have Thetford South, Thetford North, Brandon, Norwich, Northwest, and Durham from 1926. And these are literally reproductions. Um, and they um, are available for regions all over the country. They're around three pounds each. And when you open them up, you just, you see what it used to look like. And um, I mean, you're not going to be able to see any detail there, but um, I got one of these from my father-in-law a few years ago. And we sat and looked at it on Boxing Day afternoon. And he started telling stories about, he remembered people saying about this or that and um, things were within his lifetime. And none of these stories would ever have come out. And it turned out that the, the bit of common down the bottom where they take my children to play or they did at the time, those children, um, that was where they had the gallows at the time. We found out from the um, map. And he also said that another bit of land um, was we found from the map was that that's where they used to bury the amputated limbs from the hospital. So <laughs> none of this ever would have come out if we no, hadn't had this I can't little imagine map it would have. for three but... pounds. And it was a way for us to engage with that other generation. Mm. So yeah. um, that's a bit of an odd note to stop on. But well, uh, it's a thought provoking one. A thought provoking and... one. Oh, well, it's, that's a really, well, I hope we've helped answer that question. I think, I think we may have done that. And um, yeah, how can we get hold of these books? Um, we have all of them in stock, clearly. Um, you can, um, anyone can ring us on 01953-603-663 or email us on orders at ketsbooks.co.uk. Awesome. Excellent. We are right. doing click and collect from 10 till 2. Monday to Saturday during the rest of lockdown and then we'll see what happens that's great yeah right. okay super all well, right well that's great thanks Tracy thank you for joining us again bye see you soon bye bye